Hey folks, what's up and welcome to a new episode. Today we'll look at the 12 most important changes in the new V3 release of Firmware 7. So let's not waste any time and get started. Overall, this new version is not as much of a major change as V2 was. When Framework 7 transitioned from its original version to V2, migration was nearly impossible due to many changes in the structure of the code. However, with version 3 this is not the case. The API is mostly the same and only a few new components were introduced. The big changes though are under the hood, since Framework 7 is now based on a new tool called Finarm which allows to transpile generic components into React and Vue components. Now this is a total game changer. Not only does Phenomen take away developers need to decide which library they should go for, but it also speeds up development of Framework Server a lot. For example, remember that there was a React version of Framework 7 for version 1, but not for V2. The reason for that was simply because it was way too much work to convert all components from Vue to React and also keep these maintained in the long run. With Phenom, the Framework 7 team can focus on developing just Phenom components and rely on transpilation to React, Vue and in the future even Angular. But enough on this topic, let's look at some new features in V3. First, there's a new tooltip component which looks like this. When you hover over a component with a support, like for example a button, it looks like this. Then there's the new Gauge component which comes with support for SVG. What's Gauge you ask? Well, it looks like this on the right. If you want to check it out yourself, go to framework7.io where you can play around with the demo. Also support for the Persian Jalali calendar has been added. I know that this doesn't affect most of you, but this kind of calendar is still used in Iran as well as Afghanistan, so we've covered that now as well. Next we finally get rotable tabs to also fire a road change event, so you get notified when the user navigates through your tab navigation. Then the device utility detection now has five new props which are macOS, IE, Edge, Windows and Windows Phone. So no more third party code that you need to add for that. Also we have the material design theme updated to the latest MD specification from Google so your apps will now run in the fully up to date and native look and feel. Next, there is a new design style called Outline, which applies to cars and chips components. As you can see, this is a very minimalistic approach that completely omits drop shadows and gives the overall component a cleaner look. Another new feature is that FABs, also known as floating action buttons, do now support labels, so you can add text to them if you want. Then there are 24 new elevation styles for text, which are different levels of drop shadows, which can be configured through CSS classes like Elevation 1, Elevation 2, and so on. A minor change has been applied to the preload dialog API, which now supports a color value as the second argument. As I said in the beginning of the video, migration from v2 to v3 should be pretty easy. However, if you are using the Vue.js version, then you might need to do a slight change to the initialization code. First, the onf 7 ready event got replaced with $f7 ready, which is now used like this in Vue. And in React it looks like this. Also, initialization has changed a bit. In V2 it looked like this, but in V3 we do not kick off from X7 at this point anymore. Instead we do it directly in our template. So we initialize like this. And then we return our from X7 parameters from within the data method.
Other minor changes in v3 were Swiper 7 and Template 7 were upgraded to the latest version and lots of bug fixes and minor IPA changes were made, which I'm not going to list all of them here. If you want to get started with this latest release of Framework 7, check the brand new starter templates at frameworksevenio slash templates. Looking into the future, there's much more to come, like for example, support for web components, more frameworks integration, like for example, Angular, CSS variables to make Framework 7 app styling and themes much easier, first class PWA support, and of course, many new UI components. This is almost the end of the video, but before we wrap up, I have a question for you. I'm interested in your experiences on immigration from V2 to V3. Was it easy or was it difficult? Let me know how it worked out for you in the comments below. If you want to support Framework 7, go to frameworksevenio slash contribute. Scroll down a little and there you will find a link to the Patreon page where you can donate a few bucks if you want. Keep in mind that Framework 7 is free software and completely relies on support from the community. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please consider to drop a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on my face here to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. My username is timo underscore ernst, and you can find my blog at timo-ernst.net. That's it. I wish you a great week and happy coding. Bye.